Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is September 17th, 2024. Let's talk about a very important fight. Please, don't be blinded by Anthony Joshua against Daniel Dubois, right? A fight that has an intriguing line. <laughs> They're telling you that Dubois right now is a plus 300 straight up as an underdog. Understand that while that's a very important fight, you have a very important fight taking place in the United States in the same division the heavyweight division, right? Let's talk about that fight, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now the best American heavyweight, and let's keep this real, right? Right now is Gili Zhang. Folks, I know he grabs a Chinese flag. He talks about China, Chinese power. Uh, he won his Olympic medal representing China. All of that's true. He's a resident of New Jersey. He continues to be a resident of New Jersey, even with Frank Warren as his promoter. Right? Let me just say the tip-off with Zhili Zhang is his corner. Look at his corner. You're going to see American black guys in his corner. Folks, Jili Zhang, whatever they're telling you, whatever he says, right? Jili Zhang is America's best heavyweight right now, and he, quite frankly, is a serious threat to the throne. Right? I'd love to see Jili Zhang against either Dubois or Anthony Joshua. Right? I'm not sure if either Dubois or Anthony Joshua hits as hard as Zhang, who, unlike these two guys, is a southpaw, and who, unlike Dubois, has defensive skills, and who, unlike Joshua, thinks things out. Joshua's cerebral, but let's just say Zhang, in my opinion, is a different level. But let's ask a troubling question here, because boxing really does a sales job on all of us, right? And let's offer a narrative that's different than the mainstream narrative. Now, you may have heard that the best American heavyweight under 30 has Bob Arum as a promoter, right? The question I would ask and I believe it's a question all of us should ask, is which Bob Arum heavyweight is the best American heavyweight under 30? Now, they've been telling us, the powers that be, Bob Arum himself, right? Tyson Fury after sparring with this young guy. They've been telling us that big baby, Jared Anderson, is the best American heavyweight under 30, right? Okay, fine. I'm just telling you to be a successful better. You need to figure out what's really going on. We just saw Jared Anderson struggle against Charles Martin in his hometown with his high school band. Then we saw him get flat out beaten in a fight he never should have taken against Martin Bacoli, a better heavyweight. Right, folks, let me offer something different here. I believe the best American heavyweight under 30, and he's in a tough match on the 20th, is Olympic silver medalist Richard Torres. Right, folks, understand Big Baby walks around with swag. Right? Big Baby looks the part. He's tall. He's an athlete. He has the big right hand. By contrast, Richard Torres is a geek. I believe he was high school valedictorian. Right? This is a guy who in interviews will tell you that he was over his buddy's Terrence Crawford's house 
and they did a wrestling match and he lost the wrestling match. He'll actually tell that to you, right? In interviews, <laughs> you know, you see him, he's geeky, you know, he's the kind of geeky guy who laughs inappropriately at times. He doesn't know how to look macho. He's not even the best athlete from his hometown, Tulare, California. There was a Goliath, if you know your sports history, a guy who won the Olympic gold medal in the decathlon at 17 and then repeated as Olympic gold medalist in the decathlon at 52. Who's from Tulare, California? A guy named Bob Mathias, right? Understand. Richard Torres is a guy who's not even trying to be the best athlete from his hometown, right? He's just a guy who enjoys boxing. He's scientific about it. He has a 100% KO ratio after 10 fights. I'm just telling you he's a dangerous southpaw who's ready now, right? They're bringing him along slowly, folks. He's ready right now. Now, the United States has had a drought of great heavyweights, right? Occasionally we get a Deontay Wilder, right? But let's just say we haven't had a spectacular young heavyweight in quite some time. The United Kingdom has been lapping us, quite frankly, right? You, you get the feeling that the old timers, the Larry Holmeses, the Michael Moores, the Mike Tysons, they can't even understand it, right? Because in their day, we were top dog, right? Just, you know, Jerry Cooney, Michael Spinks. Well, the UK right now is top dog. And I'm just telling you, you need to look past even the hype of Bob Arum. Look at this guy, Richard Torres, silver medalist in the Olympics, right? got destroyed by the gold medalists, maybe that's the catch here, right? People think Jalalov destroyed him and was too big for him. He's 6'2". You're not going to find a better front foot heavy southpaw who's under 30 really anywhere else on the planet. Folks, I'm telling you, this guy, if things break a certain way, right, he has hand speed, he has power, he's hard to find in the ring. This guy is flat out dangerous. More importantly, he's not on most people's radar, right? People are surprised to hear he won a silver medal. And this is with one of boxing's best known promoters, right? I mean, I, mean, I don't even know what's going on. Now, here's the problem, and I know this will sound ridiculous, but he's fighting a guy from Philly, Joey Dueco, right? Joey has 11 losses. The way to beat Joey is the way Frank Sanchez beat Joey, with movement from the outside. The hole, and it is a hole in Richard Torres's game is that he is too front foot heavy. And understand, Dueco is one of these Philly guys with hand speed, right? He's not that tall. He is heavy set like Andy Ruiz. Folks, he's, he has among the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. I don't know what's going on, but the chubby guys have the hand speed advantage. Andy Ruiz still has the fastest hands I know of in the heavyweight division. I think Andy's faster than Usyk. But let's just say DeWaco, who, like Ruiz, has a problem moving. In other words, it's a lack of foot speed that costs him but you don't want to be around the pocket with this guy. And the reason this fight is intriguing is because I'm not sure if Richard Torres can avoid being in the pocket. Right? So Dueco, KG vet, 
right, who's fought people like Brian Jennings, for example, KG Vet, who's been around, who's fought tough guys. If you are too pocket centric against him, you're going to have problems. So from a American heavyweight perspective, he's also older. While Torres is under 30, Dueco is something like 34 years old. He's been around, right? So while the world is looking at Joshua Dubois, right? While we're trying to figure out the lay of the land, in a match that is a sellout at Wembley. I want fans of the heavyweight division to also look at this Torres Dueco fight. Folks, I'm not kidding. Torres is the best heavyweight under 30. Right? I'm not kidding. I believe this guy is one of the best young fighters Bob Arum has. Right? He's 6'2", I think because he doesn't look the part, he's undersold. Right, You'll see this guy's hand speed, you'll see how low the guy can get and how the guy is a southpaw and how active he is. You'll notice that his punching power isn't one punch punching power. He's putting the shots together in combinations. You'll notice the athleticism. He's a better athlete than most in the heavyweight division. Folks, he's one of the heavyweight division's best athletes. Right? Big Baby has better highlights. I'll concede that. I believe this guy is the better fighter. Right? Take a look at it. Uh, Dueco is not going to make it easy for him. Right? Dueco is going to throw some body shots. Dueco has the hand speed. It leaps out at you. But unlike Andy Ruiz who's a combination puncher himself, Dueco is not a combination puncher. Right? I'm not going to offer a bet on this fight because I assume Torres is heavily favored. Right? But what I will say is, if you want to see a major contender for the title of the best American heavyweight under 30, folks... This is the guy I'm offering as a candidate. Right? Let's just say a Bacoli fight against him would be different. Because Torres, a southpaw, would come in and would try to overwhelm Bacoli with hand speed. Now, don't get me wrong. Bacoli is special. He's one of the few guys, along with Zhili Zhang, who's a legitimate contender for the heavyweight title. Right? Bacoli's special. I thought that Bacoli-Jared Anderson fight was a mismatch the minute I heard it was announced. I didn't care where they were fighting. But let's just say Bacoli would have problems style-wise with Richard Torres. Right? Torres is fast. Torres comes in at an odd angle. Bacoli, of course, makes deals, right? He allowed Anderson to hit him in the body, right? It's hard to make deals with someone as sudden with the kind of hand speed that Torres has. As I've mentioned here, Torres has a 100% KO ratio. So the fight is Joey DeWaco. Versus Richard Torres, I'm just telling you, this is one of the more important fights in the heavyweight division that's going to be happening this month. In a month with, of course, Dubois against Joshua. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope everyone watches the fight. 
Uh, make a note of it. Again, it's Richard Torres Jr. versus Joey Dueco. Right? There is a possibility that Dueco, who is cagey, don't get fooled by the number of losses. Understand, when you're a young guy, <clears throat> and all of us were young once, when you're a young guy coming up in Philly boxing, right, you're going to have problems. Older fighters are going to give you an opportunity to fight them, whether you're ready or not. And of course, boxing doesn't pay as well as you think it does. These young guys realize that they're one upset away from being on the main stage. They'll take the fight and then they'll have problems. I need for folks to understand that Marvelous Marvin Hagler went to Philly and he himself got beaten by Philly fighters, right? I believe um, Bobby Boogaloo Watts beat him and somebody else beat him. Uh, just understand, Philly is a tough place. This is where Danny Garcia came through, right? That's the town of Joe Fraser. Um, you know, <clears throat> I was watching a Rocky movie and Sylvester Stallone in the movie, fictional character, uh, explained why Philly was such, a was such a boxing hotbed. As he put it in the movie, there must be something in the water, right? Just to understand, the Waco has some losses. This is your proverbial KG veteran from Philly, right? There is a possibility that Torres, who is two front foot heavy, comes inside and Dueco has something waiting for him. Right? I myself would like to see Torres with more of a back foot. Let me also say too, it takes a lot to stop Joey Dueco. It takes a lot. Right? Just understand, Torres is coming into this fight with a 100% KO ratio. Right, an Arthur Baturbiev type streak. Right, not quite the number of fights as Baturbiev, not quite the quality of competition, right, as Baturbiev. Uh, but understand, Torres's streak is on the line against a guy who can almost match him in hand speed. For that purpose alone, this fight's a must watch. I hope you give it a look. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.